Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. As we talked about in the previous video, the ArcOS developer has made additional tweaks to his firmware, and I feel it's a great time to adopt this as your daily driver. With the implementation of online updating available, it's only going to get better from here. As I've said before from his work porting Retro Arena to the RGB10, I can confidently say that this will also give us the best performance for the RK3326 chipset. The reason behind this performance difference is that we're using RetroArch's current release of 1.9.0, paired with the best performing cores out of the box. We're also able to further tweak the settings because he hasn't locked them down, allowing us to change the theme and other settings that weren't available to do in MULEC. The big difference here is changes that will not revert once closing down a game. Today, we're going to dive in on installing, flashing, and setting up ArcOS from scratch. We'll change the UI in RetroArch, change the integer scaling to help us give a crisper image, set up our hotkeys for access in the menu while in game, and look at how to change the cores associated with each emulator. We won't go too deep into each emulator setup here to avoid the video running too long, but we'll do individual setup videos soon for each system so you can get straight to which you prefer to set up first. The first thing to do to get started is to make sure we have a few goodies ready to go. Make sure you have a micro SD card that's at least 32 gigabytes to hold a decent amount of games. I personally use 128 gigabytes typically for these devices. You'll need a Windows PC, though you could use Mac or Linux with the appropriate software. We'll need an adapter that can reach micro SD cards, or your PC may already be able to do this. Etcher or other flashing software linked in the description. I haven't had any problems personally with Etcher, but the developer recommends others. Last, we need ROMs to transfer to the device once we're done flashing. Now that we have these ready to go, we want to visit the ArcOS wiki page to download the latest revision and flash it. This is around 2 gigabytes, so it may take a few minutes depending on your ISP. Feel free to pause the video now until it's finished. Now that the download is finished, we're going to open Etcher. On the left hand side, we're able to choose the image that we will be flashing, in this case ArcOS. Now, we want to choose the inserted SD card that we want to flash. Keep in mind, it's very important to select the right media because this step will erase and wipe whichever drive you've selected and flash the new image to it. Finally, on the right hand side, we can click flash. We will get a Windows prompt here confirming the system action. You can click yes on this prompt and this takes a few minutes depending on the read and write speed of your SD card. Now that this is complete, we'll go ahead and move over to our RG351. The first boot is important because it's going to extend the partitions and finalize the setup process with folders and future boots. We'll confirm on the few screens with A, and then the device will reboot a few more times back into the menu itself. As we can see here, this is the initial screen setup for ArcOS. What's really great is the indicator on the top for sound, brightness, and battery life. It's a number here rather than just a filled bar, which I prefer by far. Now, before we jump over to add our games, let's take a moment to talk about the default hotkeys for ArcOS. This is what we'll use to navigate the menus, launch and exit games, and make tweaks to themes, etc. The way he has the global hotkey set up is the right thumbstick, which is R3. R3 and up will adjust the brightness up. R3 and down will adjust the brightness down. R3 and power, short press, will put the device to sleep. And R3 and power, holding it down, will shut down the device. Inside RetroArch, the hotkey selected currently by default is select. Select an X will bring up the game menu. Select an R1 will save the state. Select an L1 will load the state. Select an A will pause the game, literally. 
Select in B will reset the game. Select and Start will exit the game when pressed twice back to the ES menu. On the device itself, A is used for Select and B is for Back. Now, since we are still on our device, we'll go ahead and set a few things up before moving back to our PC to add our ROMs. What's great here is much like Retro Arena, we have XFAT partitions so we can read this storage format on Windows without the need for additional software. First, we'll go ahead and navigate over to RetroArch and push A. Then select the top option, which is the 64-bit version. Options are saved between the two, so we only need to do this once. Now, I personally prefer XMB for RetroArch because I think it looks better and I much prefer the horizontal scrolling when navigating menus. To do this, we want to head over to Settings, Drivers, Menu, and then choose XMB. Next, we're going to adjust a few settings to upscale our games and attempt integer scaling where possible to help adjust some of the screen text and images because of the screen resolution of the device. Because we're using a 3x2 display that's only 320x480, games can look stretched or blurred depending on what you notice. Now, we'll press B once to go back and move down to Video, RGA Scaling, and toggle this on with A. Then, we'll move up to Scaling, Integer Scale, and toggle it on. Now that these steps are complete, we can push B three times to go back to the start of the menu and move down to Configuration, Save Configuration, and click A to save. We're able to push B and close RetroArch now to save the changes that we've made. Moving back to the PC, under this PC, we will see a drive called Easy ROMs. Inside this folder, we will see all supported folders already mapped for the device's emulators. We can manually add our game folders by folder or rename your ROMs to the corresponding folder name and drag them all at once. I have already set a few games aside to transfer over and I'll do that now and copy them. Something to also keep in mind is although not required for all, ArcOS does not come with any BIOS files. These can be added to the device under Easy ROMs in the BIOS folder, and a list of BIOS names and file types can easily be found on the wiki so you know what to search for and how to name them. Lastly, I wanted to make a few additional changes in RetroArch for when we're in game to see the benefit firsthand. We will be taking a look at the way games are displayed in the menu for when we add box art. I personally like to use Detailed, but Automatic is fine to detect if you have box art available. You're able to change this to Basic if you prefer to have just the name and box art. Launching a game, I will now press the selected hotkeys to open the menu, which is Select and X, and navigate back to Settings, Input, Hotkeys, and move down to Menu, Toggle, Gamepad, Combo. I personally like to use L3 and R3 when I have two analog sticks, so this is what I'll choose now. Now, we can go back to the beginning, choose Configuration, and Save. Then, we can exit RetroArch, and we're good to go. Jumping back into my current setup, here is an example of the theme I'm using along with some box art for display. If you have a Wi-Fi dongle, we can add Wi-Fi network by going into Options, Wi-Fi, pushing R1 to move to the plus icon, and pressing A. We will then select A from our list and enter our password. Above Wi-Fi is the update option. If you have Wi-Fi enabled, you're able to do system updates here for changes made by the developer. That's going to be all for this quick setup and installation of ArcOS firmware. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do to help answer them. I really appreciate you watching. Take care, and as always, game on.
Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and think about subscribing. Bye.